What if I told you that red and blue don't make purple? You'd probably ask what I was on and where you could find my dealer. But see, I'm not talking about red and blue, the colors. I'm talking about Gojo's red and blue attacks in Jujutsu Kaisen. The product of their combined force represents one of the coolest hypotheticals in modern science. The way Gojo combines them, on the other hand, well, that just makes my head hurt. Kinda like Twitter bots that say One Piece sucks because it's about the main character. Part of why this is so frustrating is because Gojo's powers of infinity would make perfect scientific sense, if it wasn't for this one little inconsistency. In fact, it's done such a good job of making me study the science of JJK's power system that I'm kind of falling in love with this manga all over again. But in terms of why this power is so cool, we need to look at what Gojo really means when he says he can control infinity. The base of Gojo's technique is called Limitless. With it, Gojo can manipulate and control infinities. And before you ask, yes, there are multiple infinities in the real world. Now, the basic neutral form of Limitless is a technique called Infinity. As the name suggests, this allows Gojo to create an infinity and use it as a barrier. When someone approaches the barrier, they appear to stop but actually just slow down at an infinite rate, thus never crossing the barrier. Gojo says he does this by taking the concept of infinity and making it into reality. Akutami, the author of JJK, tries to make sense of this by talking about dividing by zero or whatever in chapter 14, but that explanation sucks and really just complicates things. Instead, here's the basic idea. As JJK actually references, there is a paradox known as Zeno's Paradox wherein Achilles gives a tortoise a head start in a race. In theory, Achilles should never be able to pass the tortoise. Doing so requires him to reach the tortoise's original starting point, but by then the tortoise will have moved on and Achilles has to catch up to a new point, and so on and so on. Think of it like having something, and then having that half, and then having that half of a half. You'll never reach an endpoint and just continue on and on and on for infinity. Now, the paradox itself is a bit silly, but there are some examples of this in the real world such as the golden ratio and the half-life of the isotope oxygen-16. So what Gojo is doing is taking this concept of infinity and turning it into reality. He isn't literally creating an infinity because infinity is just a measurement. This is obviously where Akutami exercises some creative liberty, but that's okay, because this is a fictional story. So when we see this, we as readers just have to say, oh, okay, if you could create an infinity, this is what it would look like. The cool part is that Akutami puts an incredible amount of detail into that what it would look like part. Obviously with Gojo's infinity technique, but more specifically in the other applications of Limitless. But before we get into my love-hate relationship with these techniques, I just want to give a quick shout out to this comment of the week on my last video. If you'd like me to share your comment in the next video, then just make sure to share your thoughts on Limitless down below. Now, aside from Limitless, Gojo has two basic techniques. The first is what he calls Lapse Blue. By amplifying his inherent cursed energy, Gojo is able to focus it into a vacuum that attracts the objects around it. Cursed energy is the byproduct of negative emotions, meaning that this energy is negative by nature. Now, the key information here is that Gojo explicitly describes the energy for Lapse Blue as convergent. In mathematics, a convergent series is one that eventually reaches some finite end. So the math of Lapse Blue checks out. But is this really how it would work? The answer is yes. There is one analogy to how you could present this in a physical form, and that's what we call black holes. A black hole is the result of when a star dies and collapses into itself. If the star is big enough, this process will go on and on until finally you get a singularity. This singularity leads to a vacuum of space so strong that neither mass nor light can escape it. And interestingly enough, when initially studying black holes, scientists guessed that they had a density of infinity. I say guess because they still don't know exactly whether this is true. But that's a whole nother video on its own. So this is where we can see Lapse Blue in the real world. It's essentially a singularity. Now, after Lapse Blue, Gojo has his other technique that he calls Reversal Red. Advanced sorcerers such as Gojo have such a mastery over their cursed techniques that they can actually reverse their abilities, resulting in a reversed technique. Gojo does this by amplifying his Lapse Blue attack, transforming it from a negative attack to a positive. 
Everyone should be on board so far, considering a negative multiplied by a negative gives you a positive number. As the reverse of Lap's Blue, Reversal Red generates an attack that repels whatever's in front of it. And like Lap's Blue, Reversal Red is pretty consistent with real-world science. When Gojo uses this ability, he describes it as divergent. This directly ties into our conversation earlier about convergent series. If instead of a finite point, a series just goes on and on for infinity, that's what you call a divergent series. This proves that Reversal Red is in fact the natural opposite of Lap's Blue, and isn't just something Akutami pulled out of their butt. The other way we can prove this is like we did with the black holes. While we have yet to actually see them, there is a hypothetical opposite of the black hole, and in the most creative way possible, they're literally just called white holes. Instead of creating a vacuum where nothing can escape, white holes create a space where nothing can enter, effectively repelling everything around them. Just like Lapse Blue behaves like a black hole, Reversal Red behaves like a white hole. So, by carefully observing the nature of these two techniques, we can see that Goja's Limitless is a nearly perfect reflection of how infinity can be observed in our own universe. I say nearly perfect because we still haven't touched on that ability I mentioned earlier. Gojo does have other abilities that we still haven't discussed. However, those abilities make plenty of sense, so it's really not worth analyzing them in this video. The only real problem with Limitless is when Gojo decides to combine his red and blue attacks. By combining Lapse Blue and Reversal Red, Gojo creates an attack that he calls Hollow Purple. Now, the effect of this ability put into practice can be rationalized, which I plan on doing in just a few minutes. But to figure out whether something is scientifically reliable, you have to look at each step of the process. Hollow purple makes enough sense for reasons we're about to get into, and red and blue make perfect sense on their own. But it's the way Gojo combines these abilities that kind of ruins the fun. And when I say fun, I mean all the cool connections to science. I know everyone might not be a massive dork like me. Consider for a moment what Gojo is literally doing to make Hollow Purple. He's taking an infinity with positive energy and an infinity with negative energy and adding them. Just for your information, when you add infinity and negative infinity, or if you subtract infinity from infinity, you don't get anything. Not like zero, I mean, you literally don't get an answer. There's different ways to illustrate this mathematically, but the basic idea is that you can't subtract infinity from infinity because it doesn't give you a definitive answer. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so mathematically it doesn't make sense, but black holes and white holes must cancel each other out, right? Unfortunately, no, not really. The problem is white holes are only hypothetical. So we don't have any evidence of what would happen if a white hole and a black hole collided. But hypothetically, here's what would probably happen. See, when two black holes collide, they just sort of suck each other up and make a single black hole. And white holes are really just black holes in reverse. So if a white hole collided with a black hole, then hypothetically it'd just result in a single black hole. But that's not what we see happen. When Gojo combines red and blue, it doesn't make a new blue or bigger blue. In fact, he already has another blue attack, and that's not it. Adding red and blue makes purple, except adding infinity and negative infinity doesn't give you something new. It just doesn't have an answer at all. Now, you can argue that this is what's happening, since Gojo's attack seems to defy the laws of nature and erases all other matter. And honestly, yeah, you could interpret it that way, and nobody can tell you you're wrong. But the fact of the matter is that red and blue seem to be reflections of real-world examples of infinity, so the way Gojo combines them should have a reliable explanation, but really doesn't. Fortunately, this doesn't mean the whole thing is a total waste. Like I said, you can interpret Hollow Purple as the concept of this undefined answer being brought into reality. But remember what I also said about its actual use making perfect sense. There is one piece of information that allows us to pinpoint a real-world counterpart of Hollow Purple. In his own words, Gojo describes Hollow Purple as an imaginary mass. And before you question my drug abuse for a second time, yes, it is hypothetically possible for something to have an imaginary mass. While there might be other examples, one that immediately comes to mind is the tachyon. A tachyon is a quantum field consisting of tachyon particles. 
a tachyon particle is a theoretical particle based on Einstein's theory of special relativity. Basically, it's impossible for something slower than the speed of light to exceed the speed of light because it would require, and here's that word again, an infinite amount of energy. Naturally, scientists started thinking about particles that were already faster than the speed of light to begin with. This is essentially where the idea for the tachyon particle came from. I should point out, however, that although scientists originally thought tachyons traveled faster than light, they now think it's considered to behave in what is described as tachyon condensation. It's high-level stuff, so just understand that realistically, this hypothetical particle wouldn't last forever. And here's where this ties into hollow purple. Naturally, everything is made up of mass. But mass can't travel faster than the speed of light. Alternatively, a photon does not interact with the Higgs field, the quantum field responsible for mass, meaning that the photons don't have mass. So then what exactly is the mass of a tachyon particle? Well, without getting too deep into the math, the squared mass of a tachyon particle is negative. And when you solve for the square root of a negative number, you get what's called an imaginary number. Now remember, Gojo said that hollow purple is an imaginary mass. So you could argue that the tachyon particle is the closest real-world counterpart of hollow purple. They both defy the laws of physics, and neither of them have a mass like you and I do. And remember how I said traveling faster than the speed of light requires infinite energy? Well, funny enough, reversing his infinity ability on his brain essentially gives Gojo access to an infinite amount of energy. So in theory, Gojo has the energy for this kind of thing. Which is why, when you look at all of the evidence, the tachyon interpretation seems a bit more convincing than the previous interpretation. Now, obviously, this isn't a perfect analogy, and even the science isn't rock solid. But as far as hypothetical science being put into practice in a fictional story goes, Hollow Purple does a pretty good job. And Gojo's other abilities do an even better job of showing you how infinity works. Unfortunately, it's just that one thing about combining red and blue that's kind of a buzzkill. Again, it doesn't take a huge leap of imagination when the character can already create infinities. But it's still disappointing that there's this hole in the logic of Limitless. So going back to the topic of this video, you can basically interpret Gojo's Limitless power in one of two ways. One way is to say that Gojo is so OP that he just disregards the laws of physics. Which would totally be in character, considering Gojo has always been depicted as a free spirit who says F you to rules and society. The other way that I follow is to say that Gojo is sort of limitless. His powers each make scientific sense on their own, but the way they interact is limited by a tendency for logical inconsistencies. But of course, this is a fictional story, and just because Limitless isn't perfectly scientific doesn't mean you can't rationalize it within the context of JJK. Regardless of how you or anyone else interprets them, we can all agree that Gojo's powers are a great reflection of infinity and how it works in the real world. And that's it for this video. Like I said, this video made me fall in love with JJK all over again, so hopefully I was able to do the same for you. If I did, then make sure to let me know by liking the video. Now, if you'd like another video on space science and manga, then you'll definitely want to check out my video on why the gravity powers in Eden Zero don't actually have anything to do with gravity. You can watch that video by clicking on the playlist right here. Now, with that all being said, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.